Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and today we're going to be rebuilding the whole intro-outro background for the videos, which is going to be a lot more interesting than it sounds. So I've had this background for a decent amount of time, probably about a year, and I've never really liked it all that much. It's located inside the garage workshop, which means it's built around a lot of the functional parts of the workshop, which is necessary, but doesn't always look the best. And on top of that, it gets pretty hot out here during the summer, like 118 degrees outside. I don't know what it is inside, and I can't open up the door for noise because I'm filming. Which also means I'm not able to put that much cool stuff on the shelves because there's not a whole lot that can withstand the extreme weather. And even if it could survive that, it would then get covered with a whole layer of sawdust. And even if it somehow survived that, it then wouldn't look very well for the videos because it's covered with sawdust. <gasps> so I figure a solution to all of these problems is just to very simply move the intro studio away from all the extreme weather and away from the sawdust inside into my closet? Yes. So without any further ado, let's get started. So to begin, I'm going to start by removing our mirrored closet door so we can actually see inside the closet. After that, I'm going to take everything out of the closet and throw it on the floor so we have room for what we want to put in. And here we are with the closet all cleaned out. And in case you're wondering what I did with the glass doors from the closet, I actually moved them behind my desk because I thought it looked pretty cool. And please excuse the mess, that's where I put everything from my closet. <laughs> With the closet now cleaned out, it is time to begin construction. The first thing I want to build is a shelf that perfectly fits inside the closet for me to display some of my builds and more technical items on. To do this, I've taken a few 3 inch wide boards and I'm going to build 3 rectangular frames out of them to serve as legs of the unit, as you can see me doing here. I'm going to make one rectangle 5 feet tall, the second 4, and the last one only 1 foot tall. You'll see why in a second. With all three of the frames now done and the glue dry, I'm going to take my router and plunge a 3 8 deep, 3 quarter inch wide channel every 12 inches up the frames. Oh, and uh, I'm not wearing shoes for this, but you definitely should be. Next up, it is shelf cutting time. So I'm going to grab my sheet of 3 quarter inch pine plywood, that's only like $30 at Home Depot, and get to cutting. We're going to want to cut out four 10 inch wide, four foot long shelves and one 10 inch wide, three foot long shelf. You're probably going to start pacing together what we're going for now, but please act surprised. I need the encouragement. We're then going to take one of our four foot long shelves and cut a channel through the top of it about a foot from one of the sides, just like we did previously for the rectangular frames. After that, it is finally time to start assembling everything together. So we're going to take our four four foot long boards and slide them into the channels we cut into our two longer rectangular frames, gluing and nailing everything in place. I'll then start cutting out and fastening on inch and a half wide strips that overhang the face of each shelf. These not only look super dope, but also help guarantee that the shelf stays square, eliminating any need we may have for a backing. And with that, it is now finally time for baby shelf dot dot. As you can see, I've went ahead and put our last one foot tall rectangular frame into the channel on the top shelf, put the baby shelf on top of that, and then glued and nailed everything together. Now on to the wood filler. Here I have some mid wax wood filler, and all I'm really going to do is just fill in all the nail holes with the wood filler, then once it dries, give everything a solid sanding. Next up, and really lastly for the shelf, is staining. I'm just using Midwax's True Black Stain, and I think it ends up looking really cool. There we go. I think this is looking pretty nice. And so now all that's left to do is to slap on some furniture feet. And then go ahead and move this puppy on in. Hey, that actually fits pretty nice, and as you can see, my measurement was actually spot on. So now that we like how that turned out, I'm going to go ahead and get a white LED strip and hot glue it to the bottom of the white shelf so that it adds a little bit more light to the top of our wooden shelf. This way, hopefully we won't have to worry about any shadows being cast onto the wooden shelf by objects we place on top of the white shelf. Now I can just wire these up to a 12 volt power adapter. We should be golden. 
I'm absolutely loving these lights. However, as you can see, everything else around it is now really dark and it's also a little echoey. But I think I can kill two stones with one bird. What I think I'm going to do is build a very simple frame on the back of my bed because as you can see, we have pre-drilled holes going all the way down on both sides. Once we have this frame built about four feet up, I'm then going to put my light system across the top and then drape a moving blanket around the front. So we'll have lighting and also a little bit of a sound dampening system. To build this frame, I'm just going to very simply take a six foot stud and cut it at about four feet tall, which is roughly about here. That's not bad. Split the board in two, then secure one to each side of the bed. Perfect. Now we can just connect them with a thin board across the top, then hang our light and moving blanket. And in case you guys are wondering, I got this moving blanket from Harbor Freight for like three bucks, and I got this brand new LED light at Lowe's for only 20. Links for both in the description below. Now, would you look at that? Now, I'm definitely going to have to fine tune the angling of this light, but luckily it's put up with zip ties so it moves around very easily. Wop, wop, wop. All things being considered though, I'm really starting to like it. All we have left to do now is to install my camera mount so you guys have a more appropriate angle of me, and then we can get busy decorating the shelves. Hey, that actually works out pretty stinking well, doesn't it? You can kind of see my suit jacket over there. Might have to move that somewhere, and I might want to rebalance the camera a little bit. But I think this is going to work. And so with that, it is finally time for the fun to begin. Let's start decorating the shelves. First off, I have this much larger moving blanket that I'm going to put up on the top white shelf, and it's actually for a few different reasons. First off, it should help eliminate some of the echo of the closet. Secondly, it should cover up the LEDs a little bit so they glow more than they shine, which should help the camera be able to focus a little easier. And thirdly, which is most important, I think it's going to make it look pretty stinking cool. That's what we in the industry call a flawless transition. <laughs> yes, I am liking that a lot. Now here I have this cool little Crayola map of the United States that I picked up at the dollar store. And I thought it'd be super cool if I colored in all the states I've ever lived in, and then I can get stickers and put stickers on all the states I fought battle bots in so far. Or maybe I could also get like yellow stickers and show upcoming fights I have in different states. I thought that'd be pretty cool. I could mount it right here so when you guys watch the videos, you can kind of see what's going on. I don't know how well you're actually going to be able to see this, but you know, I guess it's worth a shot. Man, it's so hard to stink and color inside the lines. I need a sharper crayon. There's a map on the back of this, too. I'm liking it, but what do you guys think? Do we want the LEDs on, or do we want the LEDs off? On? Off. Very hard to tell. Maybe we want the LEDs, but maybe I should swap them out for white ones. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the biggest fan of these blue LEDs after all. I'm not liking how they make everything feel. They're actually supposed to be white to begin with, and I don't like how these other shelves aren't lit up. So let's put in some actual white LEDs in all three areas and see if that helps fix everything. So as you guys can see, this is the closet before the white LEDs, and this is the closet after the white LEDs. I think we might have a winner. I really like this. I like how well lit up I am. I like how the shelves are lit up. You can actually see what's going on, and this is while it's dark outside. So this is amazing. And on top of all that, we can of course still turn on the blue LEDs if we want to, but to be honest, I don't know if I do. But what do you guys think? With blue LEDs? or without them? Let me know in the comments below. Now I'm still going to organize the shelves a bit more. I'm trying to figure out what looks the best that ways. And as I do new projects, you'll start to see them pop up on the shelves. But with all that being said, I really like how this turned out. I like it a whole lot more than I like the old one.
But what do you guys think? Do you like this? Is this a step in the right direction? Please let me know in the comments down below, but be gentle to my fragile soul. And so there you guys have it. My new intro, outro, background thingy. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.